Well, good morning, everybody. You're a rowdy bunch this morning, aren't you? Goodness me. Goodness me. <laughs> now we sound like a leaking tyre with everyone shh, 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 all over the place. Well, what a gorgeous morning we have this morning. A little bit chilly, but gorgeous nonetheless. Beautiful blue sky. And on days like this, it's easy to, to sit and relax and thank God, our Creator, who has given us this amazing environment in which to exist. We acknowledge Him as the Almighty, the one who brings justice and righteousness and holiness to us all. And we would also would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Ghana people. And we acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging and remind ourselves that the Salvation Army and we as members and friends of the Salvation Army are committed to reconciliation at every possible opportunity. I wanted to share a few verses to you, with you from the longest psalm in the scripture. It's Psalm 119. We're not going to read the whole psalm um, I used to have a lovely dear friend um, at a previous core whose claim to fame when she was younger, her, um, when they had a talent quest, she would stand up and recite the 119th Psalm. It's like, okay, but we're not going to do that today. Some beautiful verses from um, verses 105 to 112. Your word 
is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Amen? Amen. I like the fact that in this um, few verses it talks about our willing pl- the willing praise of my mouth, which is what we're about to embark on, and that we'll also be taught God's laws as we gather here in corporate worship. So... You will notice our um, decoration that we have here and I uh, want to say thanks to Al for creating that for us um, and we're talking today about how we share the good news with people um, and being seed sowers and so I was thinking about that as I was looking through our songbook and I thought well that's about witnessing to people when we're sowing our seeds to uh, share the good news of God Um, And so I chose this song as our first song for today. The words say, We're an army fighting for a glorious king. We will make the world with hallelujahs ring. With victorious voices we will ever sing. There's salvation for the world. And then we sing uh, the chorus. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing the first two verses and chorus with the help of the band. Thank you. We're singing very well. Um, Okay, verse 3. Is there someone who'd like to read the words before we sing them this morning? Have multiple voices. We can have a duet. We nearly had a trio there for a while, and that's okay. All right, I get the feeling that you're enjoying singing this song. Would that be correct? Excellent. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to sing the third verse and the chorus. And for the chorus, the first time, I would like the band to join us in singing. All right? And then at the end of that chorus, the band is going to play. So we're singing this chorus twice. Got it? 
So we're singing verse 3, chorus, the band are going to join us to sing, and then the band are going to play, and hopefully we won't be too far off the key, but if we are, we'll make it back, won't we? Are we clear, band? Yes? Are we clear, congregation? Yes. All right, let's sing. Thank you. made it to church today. So we're going to hand over for the good news. Good morning, Eagle Farm. Yes, I'm back. A little battered and bruised, but ready for action already. Tomorrow, Nifty Neville's Nature's Tour. It's going to be wonderful weather and it'll be an awesome time for all tomorrow. Wednesday is Home League. So if you're of the right age group, Wednesday will be an amazing time to catch up with friends. This afternoon is the first Change Makers session. This afternoon at 1pm with our lovely Erica Jones. We now have modern technology people. If you're sitting there bored, you know, thinking, oh, I forgot my offering today. What do I do? We can now do it digitally. So if you watch me here live or online, when it comes to the offering, you can grab your phones or PCs and chuck in your account details and do it virtually online. Go digital. Still in the month of July, still loving our community item is meal in a cup. So that's still going very strong and the bins are getting full each week, which is wonderful, helping our beautiful community members. And we're looking for expressions of interest. For anyone wishing to know more about membership in the Salvation Army or what that might look like for them, all interest, interested parties... I'd have let Greg Shepherd, me, <laughs> know that you're interested, all right? So if you're interested in what Sebastian Army looks like, might look like for you, come and have a chat, all right? Any further information, people, grab a newsletter after the meeting, which is going to be amazing. I look forward to uh, spending the rest of the morning with you.
Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for all the good things that you give to us. Lord, we are so blessed here within this church for the wonderful music that you bless us with each week, whether it be with Howard or our band or any other person that uh, helps with the music. Lord, we are just so blessed and we want to say thank you. Once again, Father, you have given us wonderful provision for this week and so we thank you once again for that. And we would just ask that you take the money that we've offered, that you bless it, and that you put it to where it needs to go the most, Father. Help us to ever rely on you. Once again, Lord, just thank you for all the wonderful provision that you have given to us this week. Amen.
Thank you, Van. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew. Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 1. And we're reading the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still others fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. But the disciples didn't know what North Jesus was saying, so they asked him to explain himself. And so we read on in uh, verse uh, th 13, uh, let me get that exactly right, verse 18, where he said, but uh, listen then to what parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes, because the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what it was sown for. God always blesses the, pre the weed reading of his word. I'll be working on the garden, working all day long. She came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> She'll go riding on the horses, yeah, yeah. I can only get choruses out today. Gardening rap song. Welcome back here to the MCG or the Gabba or the Wacker or the Adelaide Oval or the SCG, it doesn't matter. Where they are down under in Australia this summer, because when it's summer in Australia, if you don't like cricket, I can tell you it's a real bummer. That's because cricket is the number one game in town. Yo, just ask anyone around. Yo, boys from Bondi in the east across to Bunbury in the west. I forgot you were there. That's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Just going to do some gardening. And I brought some seeds to plant. I got some chives. Does anyone like chives? Good. I got some carrots. Carrots, good. Oh, I got baby beets as opposed to adult beets. Sunflowers. Oh, and wildflowers of the world. All right. Let me have a look. Uh, 
Are there any kids here who can help me read the packets of seeds? I need help. Come, help me. If there are young people here who have better eyesight than I, which is pretty much everybody, <laughs> come here. Come here. Come and help me. Sit down with me. Right here. All right. So I've been told, though I can't actually read, that on these packets it tells me where I should plant this stuff to help it grow. It does? It does? <laughs> I believe you. Apparently it also tells me what time of the year. Yeah. It does? You reckon? Yeah. Does, is that what it's meant to do? Yeah? All right. Apparently it also tells me how I'm meant to put it in the soil and how much water it takes and stuff. But because I have trouble with my eyesight, I don't know which one of these I should plant back there. Can you help me? All right. Madison, which, which one would you like? Oh, baby. She takes the middle one. Of course she does. All right. Which one would you like? Excellent. Which one would you like? Excellent. All right. And some of you are going to take another one because I still can't read it. All right. So can you tell me there's a coloured bit on the back. What does it say? And I'm, I could be wrong, but I think that's a map of Australia, is it? Is that like a map of Australia on there? Yeah, all right. So Adelaide is like in that middle bit, I think. Yeah, you got it? All right, cool. So what does that say? When should we plant it? What, when should we plant the chives? What does it say on that band in the middle there for yours? Oh, hang on. Let's, let's communicate with everybody. What, what does it say? Spring through to autumn. Spring through to autumn. Okay, what does, when should we plant sunflowers? Spring, summer and autumn. Spring, summer and autumn. Spring That's through. The top oh, oh, what does it say in the middle? Um, late winter to early summer. Late winter to summer. All right, Mads, when are we planting the baby purple things? Um, all year round. Oh, all right. Um, okay, and what about the carrots? Oh, okay. And wildflowers? Late summer, autumn and spring. Wait, all right. Wildflowers gone. All right. Which is the other one that we can't do? There was another one, wasn't there? This one's all year round. What was yours? Oh, you're good. What did yours say? Was it all year round? Are we good with that one? Late. Are we late winter? Uh, mi yeah, we're middle winter. They're gone. All right. You can take carrot. All right. And yours good? Um, no. What does yours say? Um, spring through to autumn. Spring through. Oh, spring. How does can they, how do those how do how does those seasons go? Summer, no, autumn, winter, sp spring through. Oh, they're gone. All right. So we're down to two. Now, what does it say about where we should plant it? Does it say something up the top? What does that say? And what about this picture here? What does it say there? <laughs> that top picture. Position full sun. Position full sun. <laughs> I think we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. What does yours say? That, yeah, that. What does that say? Position full sun. All right. We are not planting any seeds today. <laughs> I brought the wrong seeds. Did you know that you heard that story in the Bible before, right? And that's all talking about different environments that you can plant in. It talks about a gardener or a farmer. And they're talking about what environments it's good to plant seed in. And in the Bible, the seed they're talking about is God's good story, right? So it got me thinking, people who we want to tell or hear about God's good story don't walk around with seed packets stuck to their head that says, I'm good to be planted in today. It would be helpful, wouldn't it, to actually meet someone and go, oh, you are, is the perfect environment for me to tell you about God's story. However, people don't have that. How do we know? How do we know if the people that we meet are ready to hear God's story? Is there a way to know? What do you reckon? I don't 
don't know if there is because we don't know what's going on for people, do we? We don't know if they're feeling really good or really sad and they, or they are just ready. They, it's the right time for them to be planted in. So I was thinking about that. What does that mean for us as people? Does that mean that maybe we maybe need to show people God's love all the time, regardless of how they're feeling? Oh, that's a challenge, isn't it? There's another scripture in the Bible that says there are two things that are required of us. One is to love God with all our heart and our soul and our mind and our spirit. And the other one is to love others like ourselves or just to love others really is what we can bring it down to. So do you think if we show love to everyone and others at all times as best we can, that if it happens to be the right time for them to hear God's word, it'll be the right time and we'll be using that. Because I'm worried that if we wait for the right time, all the time, and only plant when we think the environment is great, we might never plant anything like we've not planted today. So, challenge for you. Don't sing rap songs in church. Don't do that. My challenge to you is besides not singing rap songs in church, spend your time being good to people. And when the environment and the time is right, you won't have to worry about it because God will worry about that. And you'll be able to plant joy in people's lives and goodness and hope. So don't bother waiting for the right time. Every time is the right time to love someone else. Yeah? All right. I think I have some lollies in my bag. I won't sing while I get them. <laughs> Actually, you can pull my glove off for me because that's hard too. Ugh, all right. <laughs> all right, reach in, grab one. Actually, can you grab two and then take one to a young person that has not come up today? All right, have you got two? All right, grab two. Take one for yourself and then drop one off for another young person in the room. Mads, I'm going to give you the bag and you're going to take one for yourself and then deliver to the young people. And by young people, we're going to say 13 and under. Haha, <laughs> Josh. Um, and to all the other people, all the other young people that we didn't see, all right? Go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Was that cool? It was good, wasn't it? I think she deserves a round of applause. Well done. Well done. All right. Anyone eagle-eared this morning and notice I didn't say something? Hallelujah. Why didn't I say something? Because there was a dull war going on at church beforehand and I was so distracted by that. So my apologies. We give glory. I give glory to God for the privilege that I have of being able to be here in worship today. I'm about to embark on something that might mean I have a significant number of less friends at the end of this part of the church service. (sighs) However, all right, first of all, I've chosen a song and I've chosen a song specifically for the words and the message and it's a familiar song to me. It's one I used to love singing in the songs, although it's a bit of a country western yeehaw song and my lovely bandmaster warned me that it's not a good song for the sharing time because it doesn't, the music doesn't blend well to be able to stop after the chorus. And I said, too bad, so sad, I want to use this song. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, if it sounds odd that we stop after the chorus and the music kind of sounds unresolved, whose fault is it? Mine. Mine. I wear all responsibility. The band is absolved from anything sounding untoward, okay? Second thing, I had a tray of things that I grabbed from my upstairs kitchen, as in, not at home, I don't have an upstairs at home, upstairs here, 
and I just randomly went around to nine people and said, choose an item. And so they have chosen a random item from my tray and here's what's going to happen. After we've sung the first verse and chorus, we're going to hear from three of those people and the random thing that they've taken from the tray, I just want it to be connected somehow with God's story, whether it's your God story, whether it's an attribute of God, how it reminds you of God, how it um, helps you understand God and your relationship better, something that he does. Now, if you're one of these said nine people and you're already planning my demise, it's okay because if you can't think of something, we will help you as a collective, okay? We will, won't we, people? We can come up with suggestions, all right? So, um, so if you are one of the nine people who has res- who's taken something from my tray, after we've sung the first verse, put your hand up. We'll bring the microphone to you. The camera may or may not come to you as well, as in focus in on you. And you can either share something or we can collaboratively work out about your item. Got it? Got it? Excellent. All right, let's, let's look at the song. The song in our songbook says, Well, I've been to the river. I've been baptised. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I've been changed from the creature that once I was and redeemed is now my name. And then the chorus says, I've been changed. I've been, new, reborn, uh, I've been newborn. All my life has been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart. Oh, yes, I've been changed. All right? Okay, strap yourselves in. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's go, band. What you were worried about, bandmaster? All right, hands up, hands up. Pete, you look like you need a job. Here you go. You can do that. There you go. Katrina. Well, good morning, everyone. I got. Well, I was asked to pick something, and I picked well tongs. Could be strange, but tongs do help us in the kitchen those who venture in, and last night I randomly decided to cook dumplings, which I've never done before, not that I needed tongs, but I needed help, and I think God gives us lots of utensils in the kitchen, and I think God gives us lots of help with other people, he provides people in our lives to help us along the way, just like the tongs provide help in the kitchen. Amen. Give her a round of applause. Awesome. Doesn't have to be that, um, that many words. Who else? Kathy. Whoa, Kathy's got a dangerous one. Yeah, I picked the scissors. I love scissors. You can cut things. You can cut it, things. Yeah, it's, it's good. I think I witnessed um, Kathy trying to cut Joshua's hair with him, but yes, that's all right. I, yeah. um, to, to fit in with the song, I just love that when we come to Jesus, you don't have to be anything. You just have to come. He accepts us just as we are, Amen. which is beautiful. But God loves us so much, he doesn't want us to stay there. So he prunes. So the scissors remind me of how God prunes us to gently change us so that we actually become what he, he made us to be so it's a loving process even though scissors seem sharp and yeah it it is actually a loving process it may hurt but it's always always for our good Mm -hmm. and I thank God that he shows me what's wrong in my life 
what he wants to cut out and that he graciously helps me. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Kathy. Now, Pete, collecting the things on the tray because I did share with one person who said, oh, we need some of these at our house. <laughs> Not looking at anyone, Murray. Olive. I've got a Ziploc bag. In my kitchen, whatever I put into this Ziploc bag is protected from bugs Amen. and anything else that's, that might contaminate it. It also keeps it all together. So it reminds me of the protection that God gives to us. He surrounds us completely if we allow him and protects us. Amen. Thank you for sharing. All right, round of applause to those three people. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so we're up to verse 2, and then it'll be time for another three people to be brave. All right, thank you. <laughs> Oh, Bonnie. Oh, Murray first. All right. Well, hang on a second. Yeah. Sound. Go for it. We on? <laughs> I chose these because we haven't one at home. What are they, Murray? Can openers. There we go. Which uh, to me is good because you can open a can and have plenty of food. And I need all the food that I can possibly get. <laughs> And it gives us nourishment, nourishment and uh, helps us in our daily life. It's the same as that if we, as we open a can of food, if we open the word of God, we too can be nourished Amen. and learn about God and our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. All right, Bonnie had her hand up with her thing. There, take him off him. This is going to be short and sweet. Lovely. I have a, a lighter. Hold it nice and close to your mouth. Not the lighter, the microphone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me not to. You told me not to burn the. I did. Plate down. <laughs> yes. I tried it, but now it's locked. Yeah. But this will light up my life. Yeah. And, and God does that for you? And that's what, what, what I say for God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Bonnie. Well done. Now, I think Heather's got her hand up over there. So, Heather Tucker. Excellent. Well, I've, I've chosen the, um, the greater but I, I would probably use it to zest the lemon. Mm. And the lemon zest adds flavour to the cooking. And just as that happens, um, and it's rearranged, um, so it's no longer a, on the lemon, it's in the, in the cooking. So when Jesus comes into my heart, has, since Jesus has come into my heart, he's rearranged my life, mm -hmm. added zest to it, and found that he is greater than all my trials. <laughs> well done. Well done to all those three. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. So, um, beautifully, our final three are all contained in the band. So, that'll be lovely. So, we're going to sing verse three. And then we're going to hear from our friends in the band about what they chose. All right. Let's sing verse three.
right, who's up first? Bandmaster? No, wait for your son. Oh. <laughs> the general consensus is that Pete's making a great waiter this morning. Like, I think you might have missed your calling here, pal. Good to know you've got a backup skill if you need it. Anyway. I, uh, I have a, a, a tea towel. And I was thinking that when we're in the kitchen, whether we're preparing the meal, we tend to make a bit of a mess, don't we? Or while we're eating the meal, the dishes need to be cleaned so they're ready for use again. So this is a little bit like Jesus, isn't it? That he makes our life new again so we're ready to be used and fit for the purpose that we were designed for. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right, who else? Wayne? So I had a bit of... uh, I had um, some suggestions for mine. I've got an apple. When when Belinda showed me the, the plate, the tray of stuff... I looked at the apple and immediately heard my wife on my ear, in my ear saying, pick the healthy thing, pick the healthy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't help it, I can't help it. So I did, I picked the healthy thing. Um, and, I, and I thought that, that God provides us with everything that we need and good things that we can eat, that we, that we have and good people around us. And so I thought that, that, that he... He allows us to, to grow in him mm-hmm. and so that we can be more like him and tell that to others. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. All right. Lucky last no, 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 is you, you Brian. I have a knife. <laughs> 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 I've decided and thinking about it, I thought I can't ask for help, I should be able to solve these problems, I will. So we use it to cut up food. Mm-hmm. So then I thought, how can we convert that with God? Many, many years ago in Galilee, we all remember two fishes and five loaves were shared with many, many people. Mm. And that's my analogy and that's it. Mm. Well done, well done. That's brilliant. Well, uh, give them a round of applause. Thank you, Peter. Now, did you see the connections there? Were they pretty simple to make? If you'd received one of those items, do you think you would have been able to make similar connections? They were fairly everyday items. As I told you, got every single item from the drawers and the kitchen upstairs. We try to make talking about God complicated. It doesn't have to be. This is in tribute to my mum, who always taught me, you can turn anything into a God conversation. You just need to be ready to do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who participated in that. I hope we're still friends. You did amazingly well. The band has done amazingly well with our music, haven't they? We haven't sounded like a train wreck like we were talking about before, (laughs) church. So, here's what's going to happen. Verse 4, we sing that, and then because it is originally a songster piece, there's a big finish in the chorus, all right? So, Angie, can we have the chorus up for me? So, we sing the chorus as we have been, and then we go back to the line that says, what a difference we made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart, and then we have a bit of a sit for a while, oh, yes. I've been changed. And then we have a very big I'm changed at the end, all right? I'm hoping that's what the music says. That's what we sing it in the songsters. But anyway, if we'll work it out, won't we? So to give your legs a bit of a stretch, if you'd like to stand for fourth verse and chorus, let us bring this home. Thank you.
was a clap. That was amazing. Well done. All right, let me share a prayer with you. Father God, thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. Thank you for the fact that we can turn the ordinary and the everyday into an opportunity to talk about you and the way that you work in our lives. Help us to remember that. Help us to uh, hear what it is that you want us to hear as Pete comes and shares the message that you've laid on his heart. Speak through him to us directly. May the, the message sink deep into our hearts so that our lives are different and our, sink deep into our minds so that we understand you better. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. How are we all? It's very warm up here. Is anyone else warm? No? No, it's just me. No, menopause, here it comes. <laughs> All righty. If you haven't gathered already, settle down. At least I know you're all awake. I oh, know, but you're all awake now, which is good. We're looking at a parable. Can anyone tell me how many parables there are in the Bible? Lots? I didn't look it up. I was just curious whether everyone knew. Well, this is one of the more complex parables but it's one of the more simplistic ones that's kind of specific to a simple item. If I had the, uh, the right thing, I wanted you to uh, hear the music of going back in time, you know, back in time, here we go. This is back in the time before electricity, back before internet, back before TV. Some of you may remember that one. Back before movies, back before radio, back before newspapers, back before simple distractions. And a simple farmer heads out into his field, maybe his property, he may not have had a field, with a bag of seed, two hands, no cart, no cultivating machine. This was before tractors, remember? Before engines. Just a farmer with a pair of sandals and a bag of seed and a long, hard day. The land was not perfect. The land had not been flattened, had not been cleaned up. It was full of imperfections everywhere. It was what it was. The farmer would just walk along with a handful of seed and just start flicking them everywhere. I was going to do that with a bag of rice up here. But I thought then I'm going to have to vacuum that. I had one uh, youth worker who did that, goes the name of uh, Rowan Castle, who stood in my lovely congregation at, uh, at Bendigo with a youth story, talking about sowing the seed and threw bags of ra handfuls of rice out over all the kids and all over my stage. I had a stage that came together with multiple sections and it was about a year later I pulled that stage apart and found rice all inside the grooves and cursed Rowan's name. So I'm not going to do that today because I'll be all on the vacuuming. But that's what he did, just threw handfuls of seed wherever. That's what we get from the story anyway. That's kind of the picture that was in my mind when I started reading this. Now, I'm not a farmer, unfortunately. I've tried growing vegetables and gardens before and... What happens to them? They die. They shrivel up. I may get one carrot if I'm lucky. Uh, a little later on, about a year and a half later, I find potatoes, which I find later on when I try and do it again. Not a good farmer. So I know very little. I've been around family members who have been dairy farmers. I've been around family members who used to grow canola and lupins by the hectares and hectares and hectares of it. There would be weeks and weeks and weeks of toiling the soil, running a tractor with big blades up and down the fields, turning the soil over, being told that that field doesn't get touched now for a year, we just leave it, but we'll use this, no idea what he was talking about. But then he would go out and make sure that he would remove the big rocks and the big boulders, he would make sure that there was channels for the water to run, he would make sure that there was access to get in from different gates so he could 
get it all when it grows. The water was, or the ground was watered, fertilizer. The seed was not spread until there was a little hint of rain on the horizon. He would wait. A family member of us would be able to smell the rain, I'm sure, in the air because it would be one day he'd go, oh, I'm seeding tomorrow, the rain's coming. It's like, how do you know that? He would go and seed and no word of a lie when he finished, he'd get this shower of rain come through. Don't know how he did it. But every time he spread the seed, it would be done in a way that he would know where it would go. He would measure out how much seed was needed to cover the area, how much seed would give him the crop that he needed to pay for the amount that he was putting out. It was all calculated. It was all laid out. It was all run in different directions so it would catch the right sun. And then again, when he takes the tractor in, that he'd cover every spot and he wouldn't miss bits of the growth. He would do everything possible to limit wastage and guarantee a bumper crop. But our farmer in this parable was not like that. He had a bag of seed and he threw it. Some fell on the path where the birds came to eat it. Some fell on rocky places which did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly and perished. Others fell among the thorns. They grew up and then were choked by the thorns. Still others fell on good soil where it produced a crop. My version of the scriptures. But as with the parables, the original listers had no idea what was going on. Had no idea what Jesus was talking about. It kind of went Whoop. and then Jesus had to pause, come back and share with them. It actually says the disciples were confused and they asked Jesus the very questions. Why are you talking in parables? Just tell us the message. Jesus said to the many that was there, He said that many have listened but have not heard. Many have seen but they do not understand what they saw. Jesus quotes the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For the people's hearts have become callous and can hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their ears, eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. Jesus quoted that from Isaiah. He basically said, listen to what this parable of the sower means. Jesus starts to discuss the kingdom. Now, for many of the people around, the kingdom would have been what they would have understood. Would have been the empires, would have been the lands, would have been what a king owns in their space. But Jesus said, no, I want to explain to you the kingdom of God. So for the next 72 hours, I'm going to explain to you what the kingdom of God is like. It's how long it would take if I was to explain it and give you some decent idea. So Jesus was trying to explain to the kingdom of God in something that somebody in some space may understand at some moment who here farms. No, the parable of the sower kind of falls dead. Who gardens? A couple. Who here has sheep? Cattle? An orchard? Nothing. How do we then understand the parables that Jesus have? We kind of need the parable of the internet or the parable of the mobile phone. I'm sure there's one there somewhere. But Jesus tries to make sense of what is going on. The kingdom of God is too large to explain. To spread the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven would be a massive task. But Jesus explains the prophecy. He basically says, we are the sowers. We are but blessed for our own eyes, for we have seen. 
and our ears because we have heard. For I truly tell you, many prophets and righteous people have longed to see what you see but have not, and hear what you have heard but did not. Jesus starts unpacking the seeds that are thrown. He says, Anyone that hears the message of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away as it was sown in their hearts. This is the seed along the path. The seed that falls on the rocking ground refers to someone who hears the word, at once hears it and is so overcome with joy. But since there is no root, they only last short for a short time. When life catches up, when persecution, when ridicule comes, they fall away. The seed falling among the throne, uh, thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but then their own life starts taking over. The worries, the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word and makes it unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good ground is someone who hears the word, understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. This is what happens to the seed that was thrown around by the sower. He did not put them in nice little lines and make sure that it was all going to work. He just went out there and threw them all over the place. When we are the sowers, just like the farmer. We are to throw the message around like it doesn't matter. It's free to throw around. We have an unlimiting bag of the message of the story. We can share and share and share and keep sharing. This is what the farmer, this is what Jesus was saying about the farmer. As he spreads the seed, he was not worried about what was going on. He was not worried whether this seed that I throw in that space was going to work because it wasn't his concern. The only thing that mattered was that the seed was spread. The message of the gospel, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven were shared. And then who is it up to? God. As we spread the seed, the message of the gospel, we're not going to know what happens, as Erica was explaining with the children's story. I can grab one seed and go, this is going to be my gospel message that I'm going to do all year and stick it in a pot, cultivate it, water it, make sure it gets the right sun, make sure it's toiled, fertilised, watered, turn the soil over. What happens to that seed it's not my control. It's not what happens to that growth of that seed. The soil could be full of acid and it could just burn away. It could be dry underneath. It could just be, uh, have no nutrients in it whatsoever. But I don't know that. I don't sit there and taste the soil and make sure it's all good to go. I don't make sure that it's absolutely perfect. But if we were to use that one seed as our only gospel message that we share for this year, this decade, this half century, and put it out there, and that's our only thing, because we thought that soil was perfect, we thought that was absolutely the moment that was going to happen, then we'd be fighting the gospel. We need to be just like that sower, with a bag of unlimited seeds, just tossing it around all over the place. Sharing the gospel. Living what we know as Jesus Christ is for us. Some of our messages, some of our conversations with others may fall along rocky path. It may fall on deaf ears. Some may go into the thorns and be choked up by someone's situation. By our own situation where we just only cast it this far because we're tired and worn out. But when we throw that seed out and it lands on that good soil, it is then we see the kingdom of God working. We see the miracle of transformation in someone's life. 
And we don't know whether 100, 60 or 30 times that will grow out of that life. God is the ultimate. But we need to spread that into places where we've never seen. We need to be throwing it in places, even if it looks as though it's the worst soil in the world. We need to just throw the seeds in that area. As we share our story and our faith, as we pick up any one of those kitchen items when we're sharing with someone and make a conversation, raise a point, we start teaching the parables of Jesus. Make up your own parable. The parable of the tongue. The parable of the can opener. Who cares? You can share the story. It is not us, it is not up to us to spend too long preparing the soil, fertilizing it, watering, cleaning it up, making sure all the rocks are out the way, and then to see, just throw the seed out there and see what happens. Let God do his work. Some may fall on that unsuitable, unprepared ground that's not ready. Some may fall on good soil. And at that moment, that person is ready to hear it and to take it in and to listen to the kingdom of God and yield the blessings and reward of knowing him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gifted people. You have shown us things that we may or may not understand. You show us things of this world where you are in control. Lord, as we read your parables, as we delve into your stories and your tales that you shared with your disciples, allow us to take something away each time we read one of those. And let us find a way that we can understand it in our own lives. Lord, as we share and understand that we are not all farmers, we do not till the land, toil the land and we do not wonder how things grow or make sure it's all good, but Lord, you get us to share your word. Lord, encourage us to pull out our bag of seed and to throw our faith around, to explain what we do and where, how we come about it, share our stories and our journeys Share our commitment and our love to you with others unconditionally. So that anyone who does hear, it is up to what is going on in their life and the way God works in that space to be able to grow your kingdom by that extra person. Lord, help us to make sure our seed bag is full, that we are able to share our story, that we know you, Allow us to grow with you and look after ourselves. Lord, encourage us to share your kingdom with those around us. Amen. I couldn't go past singing a song that calls us into a little bit of action, calls us into a little bit of work. We are the hands of Christ. He uses us each day to show his love to everyone in every kind of way. But he also calls us to be his feet, his eyes, his lips and his friends. To love his work to do. His friendship is so wonderful. Will you not share it too? That is the story. Now, we're going to do all five. Can we do all five verses straight through? Fingers all right? All right. <laughs> because I think it becomes our whole person. It becomes our whole action. And if our hands aren't the best, if our legs aren't the best, if our lips are hard because we can't share the story, then let our eyes be what we need to be and let us work hard as being the friends to be able to share it. Each part of our body is something we can use 
and do. And we don't have to be the best preacher, the best seed caster, the best long distance walker to share everything. We just got to be a friend to those around us. Let us sing, Howard. Wherever we are, whatever we do, spreading the seeds of the kingdom of God is our role. And it doesn't matter whether it's going to fall on the rocky path, among the thorns, or in the good soil, as long as we're sharing it. As long as we're sharing it. We're going to sing our final song. Let us go out into the world with the love in our hearts. Love is patient, love is kind, and leave selfishness behind. Let us go out in the world with love in our hearts. But then let us go out with joy and faith. And finally, let's go out into the world with Christ in our hearts. A new life will begin as we share the gospel with those around us. Let us stand as we sing verses 1 and 2 together. Someone read out verse 3 for me. Let us go out into the world with faith in our hearts. Let us go out into the world with faith in our hearts. Faith will take away our fear, and God's purpose will be clear. Let us go out into the world with faith in our hearts. And someone, verse 4.
Indeed we do. Let's sing verses 3 and 4 as we... From Isaiah 61, 11, and Numbers 6, 24 to 26. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as its gardens causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to bring spring forth before all nations. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, and God bless you all.